Jamie's back with you once again, the king of fire and brimstone politics, back with you. And today's show, today's little uh, lecture or lesson or whatever you want to call it, is going to partially be a pep talk. It's going to partially be a discussion of electoral strategy, and it's going to partially be a math class. Uh, you know, one of the things that, that I hear a lot, and I hear it all across the spectrum, I hear it from Democrats and I also hear it from Republicans, one of the things I hear is that 2012 is going to be such a nip and tuck election. It's going to be such a dog fight of an election. And, and it's so critical that we in the Republican Party just don't make a mistake and we have to nominate the perfect candidate and we can't risk pissing anybody off at all because there's just so little margin for error in this election. And I hear that Barack Obama as the incumbent has such a huge advantage merely by being the incumbent that the Republicans have to have a perfect candidate and run a perfect campaign and not alienate one single person if we're to have any shot of just barely squeaking out a victory in 2012. Kind of overlooks the fact that since FDR, only one incumbent Democratic president has ever been elected to a second term, Bill Clinton, but you know, we'll ignore that. The bottom line is that I hear from people all over the board, uh, Democrats in kind of a na 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 voice, and Republicans in a the sky is falling, the sky is falling kind of voice, that there is so little margin for error in this election that we, we can't even bear to make one mistake. And the whole time I've heard that, and I've heard that for about three years now, the whole time I've heard that, I've thought to myself, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't, that doesn't jive with, with the America that I'm seeing and with the feedback I'm getting from people and from what I'm hearing from people that I talk to. I talk to people every day that literally hate Barack Obama. I mean, to the point of would not urinate on him if he were on fire. So where are these big advantages that he's got? Well, I thought about it a little bit more, and I did some homework this weekend. And I decided to crunch some numbers and put this idea of how little margin of error the Republicans supposedly have, put that idea to the test. So here's what I did. I looked at a couple things. First of all, one of the places I went in order to research this was a place on the web called 270towin.com. 270towin.com. Great little website if you have any interest in electoral politics or uh, that kind of thing, polls, the electoral map, anything like that, it's a great place to go. It has an interactive electoral map where you can change the color of the different states and see the different scenarios and kind of play things out on your own. Uh, if you're a teacher, it's a great educational tool uh, for when we get closer to the election. There's polls over there. There's, there's uh, historical voting data for all the different states. Uh, there's all kinds of things. There's historical maps of previous elections, so great resource to go to. So I use that site to, to sort of test some of these theories that I've got. So how did it come out? Well, a couple of things we need to mention before I get into the nitty gritty of the numbers. And don't worry, I'm not going to give you a lot of math today. There's going to be a little bit that you can follow along. I won't inundate you with numbers. But before we get to those numbers, a couple of things we have to remember. First of all, it should go without saying, but it probably doesn't, that the presidential election in the United States is decided by the results of the Electoral College. Nothing more, nothing less. Now I know you're sitting there watching me and you're saying, I knew that back in fifth grade civics class, it's kind of obvious. Yeah, probably should be, but I think we all get to a point sometimes where we lose sight of that and we get kind of wrapped up in this talk about, oh, well Barack Obama has a 53% approval rating nationally or in a national poll Obama beats a certain candidate by X percentage points. And we get kind of wrapped up in that. We start thinking of those, those numbers as, as a bigger deal than they are. Let me be clear. Whenever you hear somebody talk about Barack Obama's approval numbers nationally, or how popular he is nationally, or how far he's ahead or behind a certain candidate nationally, it's a red hair. It's meaningless. Likewise, if, if, Obama's, uh, if, if Obama's approval numbers dip below 50%, You'll hear the conservatives come out and say, hey, nationally, Obama's approval numbers are 47% or whatever it is. That will also be a red herring. It happens on both sides. Point being this, when you're talking about national numbers, in an electoral sense, they are absolutely meaningless unless you further extrapolate them to the state-by-state -state numbers and then to the electoral college votes for each of those states. Literally, nothing else matters in a presidential election. Absolutely nothing. 
In fact, I'd go so far as to say that when we talk about elections in the past, I think one of the most useless statistics that people quote is the stat in any given election about what the national popular vote was. Who cares? That doesn't decide anything. It means nothing. Unless someone is talking electoral college, they really don't know what they're talking about. Now, I know you may not like the electoral college, but that's how this next election is going to be decided. So if we're going to analyze it, we need to analyze it through that compass. Second thing to remember, Barack Obama is a very unpopular man in a lot of courts. And there's not been a lot of change in terms of the people that like Obama versus those that dislike him in the last three years. What I mean by that is you never really hear people say, you know what, I, I didn't vote for Barack Obama in 2008, but I think I will in 2012. I regret that I didn't vote for him before. You never hear that. You do not hear anyone saying that. I mean, even in Bill Clinton's days in 96, you did hear people say that. You heard people say, yeah, I voted for Bush or Perot, but I'm going to vote for, for Clinton this next time in 96. That economy's good. No one's going to be able to say that in 2012. Point of that being that Barack Obama does not have the ability to win significant numbers of votes that he did not win in 2008. Whether we're talking individually, whether we're talking about groups of the American public, or whether we're talking about states. I would go so far as to say, and some of you are going to think I'm nuts for saying this, I would go so far as to say that I do not believe Barack Obama can win one single state that John McCain won in 2008. Not one. I mean, when you think about it, 2008, Republican politics was at, at about its lowest ebb, its lowest point that we've seen in a long time. You had an economy that wasn't doing so well, you had bailouts, everything else. Hey. It was as low of a point in Republican politics as you could get. So my thought is any electoral votes we got in 2008 are an easy building ground to build from in 2012. I don't see us losing any of those votes. Okay, so there's the two things you got to remember. This whole thing's about the Electoral College, and Barack Obama cannot win new votes in this election, cannot win new states in this election. He must instead retain what he already has. Obama must have a very defensive mindset of retaining voters and states that he had in 2008 because he will not be able to go out and add to what he had in the previous election. Okay, so we're working from those two, from, from those two statements. Where do we start? Well, let's start with the 2008 electoral vote numbers. As you'll see on the screen, in 2008, Barack Obama got 365 electoral votes. John McCain, at probably the lowest point in recent history for the Republican Party, still managed to get 173. Okay, well, I'm pretty comfortable win for Obama, 365. And you know that it takes 270 electoral votes to win, so that means that Obama cleared that hurdle by 95 electoral votes. All right, so that's going to be our starting point, right? Well, not quite. There's one small wrinkle to throw in there. Uh, there has been a census since the last election, a census in 2010. And as I'm sure you know, in a census, when we find out how the population has increased or decreased or shifted in geography or whatever, there's always a reassignment of congressional seats based on that population. From that reassignment of congressional seats, that then goes on to our electoral votes in each state. So there has been some minor change in the number of electoral votes that each state has. So if you take the states that Barack Obama and John McCain won in 2008 and translate that to the electoral map of 2012, you see this. You see that Obama now goes down to 359 electoral votes, McCain goes up to 179. Okay, difference of six votes, probably not a huge thing, but for accuracy's sake, that's where we'll start. Obama with 359, McCain at 179. Now, what does that starting point mean? That starting point means that Barack Obama from 359 electoral votes has cleared, in theory, that 270 hurdle, that necessary to win 270, he has cleared it by 89 electoral votes. Now, if we understand and we accept that Barack Obama will not be able to win any of the states that he lost in 2008, then that means he must retain 270 votes from that 359. That's a difference of 89 votes. What that says to us as Republicans is we need to win 90 electoral votes from what Barack Obama had in 2008, and if we do that, we win the election, period. 90 electoral votes. That's all it takes. Now, how difficult will that be to do? Well, 
Let's think about this. You, you undoubtedly have heard, if you've heard any analysis of this at all, you've heard people talk about Florida and Pennsylvania and Ohio, the three big swing states, and they are, and they're going to play a tremendous role in this election, as they have for the last several elections. But I don't think those are the only three states you need to look at. I think there's a couple more. If you go and look at an electoral map from 2008, you might see, and I know it stuck out to me like a sore thumb, what stuck out to me like a sore thumb was two states, Virginia and North Carolina. Two southern states, two states that, according to Gallup or any other reputable uh, polling company, tend to be a little bit more religious than many other parts of the country. Hmm. And they voted for Obama. Well, I think there's a good chance that states like that could be in play again in 2012. Let's face it, states that are fairly religious, Barack Obama has said, he's gone on record and said that he does not believe America is a Christian nation anymore. He said that in the 700 Club. That, uh, that quote is out there. And incidentally, when he said it, he didn't sound as though he was that disappointed about it. Now, I'm not saying Barack Obama is not a Christian. He professes to be, and that's fine. Whether he is or not is between him and God. But certainly, he has not gone out of his way to make it appear as though his Christian faith, if indeed it exists, is the primary mover and shaper in his decision making. Certainly doesn't appear that way. So in states like Virginia and North Carolina, and, and even parts of Florida down south, where that is a key element, Obama might have some trouble. And hey, let's say we run a Rick Santorum, who everybody knows that his faith is the primary directive in how he makes his decisions. Obama could be in a lot of trouble down there. So let's go to the nitty-gritty here. North Carolina and Virginia, where Obama won last time. Virginia with 13 electoral votes, North Carolina with 15. That comes to 28 total electoral votes. You take that away from the 90. If you win both of those states, you take those away from the 90, and that leaves you with 62 electoral votes remaining that you need. Now some of you are saying, how can you be so sure? Hey, let's look at Virginia, folks. If you remember back to uh, election night 2008, when Virginia went for Obama, every liberal commentator you could think of was sitting there saying, well, this shows a tremendous change in Virginia in the long term. And Virginia, that's been a long time red state, it's now a blue state. And they made it sound as though it would stay blue forever. But, well, 2010, the Republicans did pretty well in Virginia. And even late last year, if you look at Obama's approval rating in Virginia, it was at 40%. Folks, I would be shocked if Virginia doesn't turn back. North Carolina might be a tad tougher, but even still, I think there's a great shot there. So you go get Virginia, you go get North Carolina, that's 28 electoral votes, that brings you down to only 62 more that you need. Okay, we mentioned Florida a little bit earlier. Let's go back down there. Florida has 29 electoral votes. Now, if you're familiar with Florida at all, you know that from roughly a line connecting Orlando and Tampa to the north. If you put an imaginary line there at Orlando and Tampa and look north, that part of Florida is pretty much the south. That part of Florida is pretty much America, mainstream flyover America, where people have values and believe in the right things. Barack Obama is going to be in trouble in that part of the state. Now granted, from Tampa and Orlando south, Florida is pretty much like a foreign country. I get that. But even so, is Obama going to do terribly well with the Hispanic community, the Cuban community, down in Miami, in that area, Miami-Dade? I don't know that he will. I think there's a great shot in Florida, folks, especially if we can get Marco Rubio on board with us and get him to sort of endorse whoever our candidate is. Folks, I think Florida is extremely winnable. So let's take those 29 votes. We said we had 62 left that we needed after North Carolina and Virginia. Florida's 29. Let's take those 29 out of there. If you win Florida... Now you're down to only needing 33 electoral votes. Hmm, we're in striking range now, aren't we? Now let's go back up to Ohio and Pennsylvania, the other two states that every pundit talks about. Ohio with 18, Pennsylvania with 20. Okay, that adds up to 38. You win those two states, you're done, right? Well, yeah, but let's, let's play worst case scenario here. Let's play devil's advocate here. Granted, it would be great to take Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Florida. It would be almost impossible to lose the election if we did that. But I think we all understand that all three of those states are going to be competitive to some degree or another. I think it would be the height of optimism to assume that you're going to win all three. So for sake of discussion, 
Let's say that we don't win both Ohio and Pennsylvania. Let's say we just win one of the two. And let's say, for sake of discussion, we take the smaller one. We take Ohio at 18 electoral votes. Give us Ohio, put that in our column. So you subtract the 18 from Ohio from that 33. Now we're down to only 15 electoral votes left. 15 left. We can taste it, right? Where do we get them? Hey, there's a whole secondary set of states that Obama won in 2008 that he has some vulnerability in in 2012. States that, while they're not a shoe in for us, there's a good shot for us to go in there and win. We can make our case and pick off at least a couple of these states. States like Michigan with 16 electoral votes. Indiana with 11. I'd be shocked if we didn't win Indiana, by the way. Minnesota with 10. Colorado, 9. Iowa, 6. I'm not saying we're going to go in there and win all of those states. We're going to run that table. But I'm saying when we get down to 15 electoral votes left, all we got to do is win a couple of those states. Michigan, Indiana, Minnesota, Colorado, Iowa, win two of them, and you got it. That's it. That's, that's a road to 90 electoral votes. That's a road to the 270 total. Now, that's not the only scenario you can look at, but to me that seems to be one of the best scenarios, one of the most obvious scenarios, that you solidify the South, you get North Carolina and Virginia back to their senses, you bring Florida back, and if you do that, if you solidify the South, and you get that southeastern quadrant of the United States, just as we saw in the days of George W. Bush, if you get that southeastern quadrant set up, then it's going to be awful hard for Obama to win. You do that, and you need 33 electoral votes from a combination of Ohio or Pennsylvania, Michigan, Indiana, Minnesota, Colorado, Iowa. How can you lose? My goodness, folks, it's right there. Of the 359 electoral votes that Barack Obama won, numbers adjusted for 2012, of course, of that 359 that he won in 2008, he's got to go out there and win 270 of that 359 because he's not going to take anything that already went for McCain. And I know there's some significant places out there where Obama's untouchable. California, New York, Illinois, I get that. Okay, we're not going to compete there. But what I'm telling you is that Obama could win California unanimously. Not one single California resident could vote for the Republican, and we could still win this election going away. And the reason being, there's a lot of states with a lot of electoral votes where Barack Obama is vulnerable. You know, Gallup recently came out with a state-by-state -state comparison. Remember we saying earlier that when you listen to national numbers, kind of throw them out unless they break it down state-by-state? -state? Well, Gallup did that. From the end of January, they, they ran their approval ratings for every state, and they showed that right now, out of 50 states plus the District of Columbia, there are only 10 states plus the District of Columbia where Barack Obama has an approval rating of 50% or higher. Folks, he's vulnerable. Now, does that mean those numbers are going to stay stagnant until November? Of course not. Things are going to fluctuate. But it tells you the uphill climb he has. He's got to get 270 votes out of 359. And we only have to get 90 out of that 359. Folks, it's right there. I could practically taste this. And I'm telling you that any of the four candidates we've got left could get those 90 votes. Any one of the four. I think Santorum will play well in Virginia, North Carolina. I think he might surprise some people. In Florida, if we can get some turnout from the north part of the state. Heck, he might even get Pennsylvania. I think Romney, well, I don't want him to get the nomination. I think he could certainly do it. I think Ron Paul, of all people, while it would be a disaster for him to be in the White House, I think he could go down there and get the 90 votes. The bottom line is, Barack Obama is not trying to pull 270 votes from 50 states. He's trying to pull 270 out of 359. Because there's 179 electoral votes, ones that McCain got, that Obama simply can't have. He's got no shot at him. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.